welcome back to our tutorial series for the operational art of war 4. Uh, today we're going to be talking about advanced combat and of course there's probably a, even a lot more you could read in the manual about advanced combat. We're just going to try to touch upon the basics of advanced combat if that makes sense. So the first thing I want to show you is basically how to determine whether or not your unit is in the same formation as other units on the front. Right here we're playing the Eastern Front 1915, or we're playing as, of course, the Central Powers, the Austrians and the Germans against the Russians. Um, now, one thing I want to show you here, if you click this unit right here, you're going to see that all of these units around this particular unit have a gray tile underneath them. This is basically proof that these units are in the same formation as this unit right here. Uh, the same would be true if I click this HQ unit. All of these units are in the same formation. Now, the game itself has a variety of different deploy options for your men. If we go ahead and just right click on a regular infantry unit, we can actually see that we've got the option to dig in. We've got the option for, of course, uh, tactical reserve and local reserve. So local reserve means that the unit with this deployment will try to move one hex closer to each battle during the enemy's turn that's in its movement range. Okay. Now, of course, a communication check must be passed initially. Tactical Reserve, on the other hand, is a regular unit that will try to join any battle that's adjacent to it. Artillery won't try to join, but they can still support it. So Tactical Reserve is a great way to have artillery support battles while still being able to move. Right now, we're going to go ahead and set it for the entire group, although you don't always have to do this, of course. So in terms of attacking an enemy unit, you want to go ahead and select your unit, uh, or any of these units right here. These German units are a bit stronger than our Austrian allies. And I'm going to right click on one of these areas. So let's right click on this town here. Now, of course, you could go over here to the single group attack or single unit attack, and you can minimize, limit, or ignore losses. Now, basically what this does, it, it influences how long the unit is going to keep attacking uh, in the battle before actually just giving up. So obviously, if you're on minimize losses, the unit is going to be a little more careful. If you're on ignore losses, they're going to charge in like madmen and try to kill everything in their path often to their own detriment. But right now we're actually just going to jump to the plan attack phase. I just want to show you guys that you don't necessarily need to go into the plan attack phase to start attacking. So let's go ahead and plan an attack here. And there's definitely something we want to take a look at over here on the support box. The support box is where you get your artillery support. Um, and typically if there's no red X, you can actually go ahead and click this um, and you're going to get 100% of the actual support from this unit during the turn, but you're not going to be able to use that artillery unit for a few more turns. Um, and now every unit that appears in the support box without a red X and is unselected is going to give 50% of its artillery support either which way. So whether you select it or not, it is going to give that support. Now if there is a red X, then that unit is unable to give automatic support but it can be selected to support manually. So of course, we're gonna go ahead, we're gonna left click on these units. This is going to confirm that we want their support. And now we're gonna take a look over here. You can actually see these little yellow flags. What this explains and what this is trying to show us is the cooperation between the units. So obviously these units are cooperating. They're getting along quite well. Depending on the kind of war you're fighting, some units may come from different countries or just different divisions, and the cooperation is not gonna go so well. Another thing we want to take a look at is the hex placement. This is very important. So you can see these hexes on the left have some of our men on them. We can't select them because they can't attack. Uh, they're currently reorganizing, and so they're basically just staying there. But it shows you that wherever you put your guys on the tile set, um, you're basically always going to be focused on that central tile set that you're trying to attack. And the enemy might also have units on these other tile sets to try and defend uh, against your attack. So you definitely want to keep that in mind. If you look down here, you can see some numbers. Uh, so for instance, our attack 76 plus 21, and our def defense, which is 20, which is a 20, 97, excuse me. Um, and basically, the best way to determine how these numbers are calculated is actually to take a look at the manual. This can actually get quite complex, but you can probably assume that with some good units, some good support, that attack power is definitely going to increase. Uh, now, time expanded is definitely something quite interesting and something we would want to go over during this battle. And what that basically is, is the time spent 
uh, to complete this battle. Typically speaking, time expended is going to be the number of rounds the battle is expected to take, and this largely depends on the amount of movement points the attacking units have spent in the turn so far. So for instance, if you're bringing guys to the battle, bringing more infantry squads, they actually have to walk to the battle, they have to get there first. And once that occurs, the time expended may actually increase. At that point, you go ahead, you check off um, the yes button, and now your attack is confirmed. You don't always have to go to the battle planner to carry out your attack. So for instance, we can actually take this group right here, uh, and we can right click on the enemy and sing select single group attack. So that means everybody in this stack of units will attack, and we're gonna go ahead and click ignore losses. So we're going in for a major attack uh, in this area right here. I'm going to do the same with these units right here. I'm going to just go ahead, single group attack, ignore losses, and single group attack, ignore losses. And once again, this is one of the ways of avoiding the battle planner if you're in a rush. You don't always have to use that battle planner. It really is up to you. Welcome back guys. So now we are going to try and resolve all scheduled battles to see what happens. And of course, you can always just go up to the screen here to end your turn, but you can also go over here to the unit section and click these two yellow flags. That's what we're gonna do here. We're gonna resolve our attacks. And you can see that our men actually were attacking. We can tell by the little explosion that just happened over uh, the enemy unit, although that could also be uh, you know, air power or artillery. In this case, we know it's an infantry attack because we plan the infantry attack ourselves. Okay, so 50% of our turns remain, and here we go guys, we've got now a nice list of combat results. Uh, to check out the combat results, what we want to do is we want to click on one of these rounds. And I definitely want to try to find the combat result that's best for us, because let's face it, this one uh, did not go very well. And we weakly attacked here. For those of you that have seen the rest of the tutorial, you'll know that this is a possibility. And in this case, our weak attack did not work out. So I'm going to go over here to the second battle. Um, I think this is uh, the, the most interesting one because we're doing the best. Uh, of course, we can always look at the casualties for either side, either the attacker losses button or, of course, the defender losses button. Um, so let's go ahead and take a look here. I want to see if, hmm, you know what? We're going to actually take a look at the battle right here only because the duration is a bit longer so we can get an idea of what happens when the duration goes past a certain level. Um, what we're going to do now is take a look at the detailed battle log and to do that you want to click on these two swords crossing. So let's go ahead and click that. So this is the combat chart. Um, it converts the full log into an easier to read format. Blue is the attacker and red represents the defender. Color coding of rounds show if a unit participated or not or if the battle was delayed. And letter codes can actually be seen in the legend. So if you're having some difficulty remembering what these letters mean, you simply click this button right here, the combat chart legend, and it's gonna give you a, a detailed explanation of what each of the letters mean, including the color of the text. This can be really useful and also gives you a more in-depth look at exactly how uh, this works in a detailed way. Now, of course, you could just read the news item, which is also quite fascinating, but this, to me at least, is a little bit easier. Well, guys, those were the basics of combat. In the next video, we are going to explain turn timing and how combat and movement interacts with it. Thanks so much for watching. I hope you enjoyed. Have a great day.